And the job of Manhattan District Attorney doesn't change hands very often. In fact, for history lesson, we've only had three in the past 46 years here in Manhattan. But we'll have a new person in January. Our next guest wants that job. Thomas Kniff is Republican candidate for Manhattan DA. He ran unopposed for the nomination, and he joins me now to tell us what he will do if he wins the election in November. Good to see you, sir. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. So let me begin with this. The first question, kind of right to the point, how do you win the election, right, in a Democratic city? Well, yeah, look, I mean, there's no question that, that Manhattan is a, is a Democratic town and a liberal-leading town. But what I tell people is, look, even Democrats, even liberals don't want to get attacked on the subway. Even uh, Democrats don't want to be accosted walking down the street on the way to the grocery store. Uh, the reality is we have a, a crisis in the city. It's not a Republican or Democratic mm -hmm. crisis. It's not a black or white crisis. It's a humanitarian crisis. I'm a combat veteran. I served in Iraq. I know what a humanitarian crisis looks like. I've also served in the criminal justice system yeah. in New York on both sides of the equation for the last 20 years. And what's going on right now is like is like nothing we haven't seen. It's like nothing we've seen before. And, so, and I speak with mostly Democratic voters, and yeah. you know, they are utterly ready to take the step, uh, reasonable ones, common sense voters, to take the step and vote for Republican if it's going to fix things. So let's talk about this, because if, if people haven't been following the race, let me just give an update. We await the counting of almost 40,000 absentee ballots to see if you will face frontrunner Alvin Bragg or Tally Ferhady and Weinstein. So we're talking about the, the numbers of crime right now. Your opponent, Alvin Bragg, was here on the Pixel More News last week with what he would do to prosecute crimes. What is your approach? How does it differ from his? Well, it, it differs on so many levels because Alvin Bragg is really running on a de-prosecution platform. He wants to stop prosecuting quality of life crimes. He's pledged to stop prosecuting retail thefts, resisting arrests. He's even made statements that he would stop prosecuting gun possession cases at, at a time when we have an epidemic of gun violence in the city. Uh, it's just, it, it's hard to find any sense in, in, in a platform like that. So, that. so one of the first things I want to do as DA is I'm going to call for reform of the disastrous bail reform. If you, you chart the, the unprecedented rise in crime we've seen over the last year and a half, it, it really all can be drawn back to when we change the bail laws and we've taken away the power of judges mm -hmm. to incarcerate dangerous individuals on a whole litany of offenses. Right. So, so yeah. that, that's first and foremost. We need to yeah, and, and the, the police commissioner um, has been here many times talking about that there needs to be a reexamination of the bail reform laws, right? But you're in favor of what I guess would be called broken windows prosecution. So you're talking about prosecuting quality of life offenses like graffiti, turnstile jumping. Um, but there's a lot of people that have been on the streets protesting against those, saying, well, those are minor infractions and they really affect black and brown communities. Where do you draw the line there? Well, there's a lot of misunderstanding. You know, a lot of people incorrectly believe that a prosecution means, well, you're going to arrest someone, you're going to prosecute them to the fullest extent of the law, you're going to convict them of a crime, and you're going to send them to jail. The reality is that very few prosecutions, the minority of prosecutions in this city and any other place I know end like that. The majority of prosecutions, the majority of arrests in this case today and in the past don't result in criminal convictions, don't re result in jail. Uh, you know, no matter what the progressive left would have you believe, uh, Rikers Island is not now, nor was it ever, populated with low-level drug offenders or people who committed quality of life offenses and, and first-time offenders who just couldn't make a minimal bail. But there were. Uh, you know, but there were. We've know we know cases where there were people that were in Rikers and who died in jail. Yeah, I mean, if you're talking about. Khalif Black Broward, which would, right, he wasn't there for a minor quality life offense. Uh, you know, the, the 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 people that went to Rikers Island, you know, for, in the overwhelming majority of cases, either had troubled criminal histories, repeat offenders, or, there for, or were there for set very serious offenses. Look, no one's saying the criminal justice system is perfect. I've spent the last 15 yeah. years of my career being a criminal defense attorney. I'm the only criminal defense attorney in this race. So I know what fairness is about. I know, what, I know what, what fighting for fairness is about. And no one's saying that we can't do things better, but you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. You can't take broken windows, which over a 30-year period took us from 2,400 homicides a year down to 300. You're talking about over two or three decades saving approximately 50,000 lives. That's as many as the United States lost in the entire Vietnam War. So, 
and just undoing all that because there are certain anecdotal examples of unfairness. You need yeah. to correct those anecdotal exam examples, but but not destroy the whole system. Understood. And, and I did ask you, um, Alvin Bragg this when he was on the Pixel Morning News last week. I'll ask you as well in the interest of fairness. You'd be taking over if you win at a very interesting time where there uh, is an investigation into former President Donald Trump. How would you handle that investigation? So that, that's the question all of us get, and, and I've always given the same answer. I'll actually give credit to my Democratic opponents because this has been pretty consistent with their answer as well. You know, look, someone who, who does not have the evidence, who's not part of that case, who's not taken office yet, can't comment on that investigation or any of the hundreds or thousands of investigations that I'll be taking over if I'm elected on November 2nd. What I will say is that I will prosecute any case with, without fear or favor. I have no connection to Donald Trump. I have no connection to the National Republican Party. I don't even have any nexus to the New York State Republican Party. I, I am not a political person. I, I never wanted to be political. I never desired to be district yeah. attorney. I'm doing this because I see what is happening to this city. And by the way, the, the crimes that are occurring are disproportionately impacting black and brown communities. So, so the people that the Alvin Braggs of the world purport to champion understood. are those that are most terrorized by the policies that they wish to implement. Uh, understood. Uh, just in the interest of fairness and time, we're simply out of time. So I do appreciate you coming on this morning. We mentioned Khalif Browder. For those who don't know the case, I urge you to go to pix11.com, read the history there on Khalif. Um, but in the meantime, Thomas Kniff, thank you very much for being here this morning. I appreciate you having me. Thank you.